Hey everybody, it's Chris Magel, uh, head of agency development for Samba TV, and I am super excited to be joined by Kara Lewis, the newly promoted chief investment officer of Dentsu Media. Welcome, Kara. Thank you so much for having me. I am very appreciative to be here and excited about my new role. Uh, we're great. It's great to have you. Why don't we just start with, um, you know, coming into this role, there have been people doing what you've been doing, what you're doing today. For, for many, many years, we've both, been, we've both been in those roles for many, many years. We've seen our predecessors coming up in these roles. But in this moment, in this transformational moment, I'm curious how you're thinking about, what are, what are your priorities as you're just settling into the role at Dentsu today? I mean, I think the priorities are based on what's happening in the landscape. Um, I think we've had some amazing um, paths and those paths are going to continue. Um, we just need to somewhat accelerate um, and accelerate them in areas that are going to make it better for our client. And what we always talk about is better, better for the consumer at the center, right? The consumer is at everything we do from data to creative, to investment, to where we place our buys, to even privacy. So, um, you know, I'm just going to continue and maybe put my swirl on it a little bit, but continue um, on the path of making sure that we are looking five years from now and 10 years from now, um, that we have a, an agency and clients that are adaptable to change because change, change is here and change is going to continue to happen as more tech comes, as as we want to advance measurement, like you spoke about, as we need to advance measurement, as we need to um, change the way in which we're guaranteeing. Um, so a lot is going to continue. Um, and I would say that we will just accelerate in terms of getting there um, and what our priorities are around you know, the digital world um, that is ingrained into everybody's day-to-day -day at this point. Um, I don't think any group can say they don't know how to invest in digital. Um, it's just not something that can be done. Yeah, and you say digital, and I think what's happening really quickly is addressable, right? Yep. So um, digital used to be a very cookie-driven uh, medium. And today, I think what we're looking at in video, what we're looking at in social, what we're looking at in, in many digital and uh, formerly analog media channels is a, is a huge increase in the availability of addressable delivery. Uh, I'm curious, just talk, thinking about that area specifically, things that might change in the way that you approach your go-to-market um, versus what has been done in the past? Well, we all have to think from that digital first position. Um, and while we might slowly in certain channels be transacting that way, we have to think about where the end goal is and how we get there. Um, so, you know, there might be one media type that's 5% of their investment right now, um, but the rest of it is norm is traditional based. Um, eventually it's going to get there. Um, so for us, it's consistently thinking about that. Um, we are, we're training every employee to operate in a programmatic way, um, meaning that there's cross training happening. We have to have hybrid individuals that know how to do direct buys and programmatic buys. Um, and, and I think we've had our employees who are embracing that. Um, they see the change, they're embracing the industry and they want to be at the forefront with us. This is really interesting to me. So can you can you dig a little deeper, just give us a little thumbnail on, how are you taking a video investment group that was largely direct to publisher historically and getting all of those individuals or the ones that want to embrace it, trained up on how to operate programmatically, how to trade using technology platforms and the data that feeds into those technology platforms? We're leaning on our partners to help. Um, we're leaning on them for sure. Um, we've invested in terms of making sure that we have somebody that's very prominent in the programmatic marketplace to come in and train our employees. Um, and it's, it's not one of those things that's, it's a flip of the switch and then we're just, we're operating that way, right? It's on, and, and we are very, at Dentsu, very client centric. So it is based on a client model. Um, it has already been implemented in some cases. Um, I think it got our employees um, enthused and I think poised for the future. And um, it will be little by little chopping away um, in how we operate. But again, it's very client centric. So 
Um, it all will depend on what the client's needs and objectives and strategies are. What you're saying is music to my ears because I've always been a huge proponent of modernizing the careers of those that exist in our industry rather than ushering in an entirely new different set of talent, taking the individuals who have incredible skill sets, incredible experience and knowledge and, and adding dimension to the, to the experience of those individuals. So um, it, what's so interesting about the world of addressable is that when you and I were coming up, addressable was about, it was about precision because you can target one-to-one, -one, but addressable as a strategy is becoming a far greater opportunity. In, in addressable strategies, what do you think are the impacting factors? There's, there's audience data, there's uh, new world TV data, whether that be set-top box, ACR. How have you been incorporating things like that into your addressable approach? We've been using data at the center, um, whether it's been planning or optimizing and now investing against it, we've been using it. Then we layered on M1. So I think you know, data is at our center. Um, I think we've also been partnering with companies that do have ACR data. We've been talking to all the measurement companies about what sort of data that they use, what are they marrying it up with. We can't just use one data set right now. We have to use multiple together because not there is not one data set that has everything we need from and in the addressability landscape, right? There's some that have the ACR, there's some that have the one-to-one, -one, there's some that have the attention data, there's some that have you know, the emotional intelligence data. We need to put that all together to be able to get more effective for our clients. And to be honest, you, you make that consumer experience better because they want the experience when they want it, where they want it, and they but they also want it very personalized and they don't want to be annoyed. Um, and so we need all of that built together to be able to do that. I think the biggest thing is the tech, right? We need to have the pipes built to be able to do cross-platform, um, to be able to look at things cross-channel. Um, and that's, I think, the world that we, we need to see um, and happening um, and hope to have that built soon. In a world like that, do you think in, uh, in just thinking about how you manage audiences, how you manage delivery, how you transact, do you think that the, the TRP becomes a thing of the past, maybe gets broken into its more important components, reach and frequency? What are your thoughts on that? Um, I think it doesn't completely go away um, because I think we live in a, in a world where, again, the consumer's at the center, which the consumer has no idea what a GRP is, but our clients that are selling product or that are placing ads to sell them product, um, you know, some are tied to GRPs. Um, so I think it's, it's something that I don't think will ever go away, but I think there's a lot of clients that are willing to look at impression base, to willing willing to look at incremental reach. They're willing to look at the addressability against their audiences and then how it drives to outcomes. And whether the outcome is a lead or it's an action or it's attention, um, I think we have an, a gamut of ways in which we can try to get to some KPIs that are deliverables that the clients really want. So I guess that leads us to the, to the final topic I'd love to chat with you about, which is the industry is just it, the, the discussion around the need to evolve measurement, uh, whether that be, you know, needing to, needing to move to a, a multi, you know, provider measurement marketplace or just simply evolving what's measured, right? Whether it's impressions or um, deduplicated reach and frequency or outcomes. And, uh, you know, I'd love to know, you know, where does Dentsu sit in that process at this point? Obviously nothing's been determined. Wouldn't expect you to have a, a full point of view at this point, but I'd love to know where you are on that journey. We're definitely on a journey. Um, we've done um, a reach out to multiple vendors um, in the measurement space. Um, we've had some clients involved in those meetings that we've had. Um, we did an extensive RFI of questions that we had from an agency point of view. We know there's obviously things going on from the vendor point of view and with the VAB, um, but we essentially want to be doing what we know we should do on behalf of our clients that we talk to every single day. Um, we presented yesterday um, a bunch of our findings from um, from our reach out um, to the vendors, and we are in the testing mode. Um, we want multiple clients to be testing um, various different ways with various di different measurement partners. Um, and I think we have to be, we have to be figuring out what is the future. I don't think we'll be transacting only on one in the future. That's, that has simply gone away. And truly it hasn't been around 
for five to 10 years with addressability and guaranteeing on audiences and, and one-to-one um, and essentially using Merkle data for us, like we have not been transacting on just one anyway. Um, so I think in the future, it's going to be multiple different vendors out there. I think it's going to get a little confusing, um, but we've already seen with um, a couple of providers this week that have partnered together that, um, you know, the power of data and the power of powering together and the power of being the future is, is definitely, I think, on all the forefronts. And um, I think multiple different vendors will get there. And yeah. Samba was included. So. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Uh, we, we're very happy to be in the game. I, and I totally agree that the industry needs to be working with all of the different potential providers over the next year, maybe a year and a half, two years, because uh, experience of working together is what's obviously going to start to identify what needs to get worked on and what's going to work and what's not going to work. So looking towards the upfront, Kara, uh, what percentage of your clients would you say might be interested based on this measurement conversation in transacting on multiple currencies? Maybe not guaranteeing on a new currency just yet, but possibly measuring multiple current currencies? It's probably too early to tell, but um, when we hung up the phone yesterday with a bunch of our clients, we had a handful of them say, I'm ready to test. So just having those clients raise their hands and want to test just shows that I think everybody's ready to see what different measurement is out there. Um, probably too early to say what a percentage is, but we will have clients that are not trading only on the current measurement company. And they're going to spend more in, uh, in CTV this year? Yes. <laughs> you can predict that one, yeah? <laughs> yeah. Kara, <laughs> uh, this has been uh, a great conversation. I wish I could talk to you for another half hour about these topics. I'm so curious. Uh, thank you for joining me. This has been great. Thank you so much for having me. Um, always love to be on the Beat videos. Um, and thanks, Chris, for hosting. So. Thanks, Thank Andy, you. for the opportunity. Thank everybody for joining if you're watching right now. Have a good day.